All right. Welcome to the show today. My guest today is Tim Beanland. He's the host of the Bean Talking podcast where he interviews peak performers who are the best in their field. He's also a passionate marketing nerd who loves everything about consumer behavior, content creation, and sales. I want to bring Tim on the show to find out what he's learned from podcasting and interviewing top performers, how he thinks about marketing in general and for his projects, and what's next for him. So Tim, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Of uh, course, it's exciting. So, so I'm going to start a little bit on your background and your story. So could you maybe just explain a bit about yeah, who you are and what's what's your story? Tim? Yeah, no, this is that's really cool. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for the platform. Um, of course. You know, as podcasters, we we build really cool things. So, just want to thank you for that. But yeah, who I am. Um, so yeah, as you say, passionate marketing nerd. Um, I started accounting. Figured it wasn't for me, but I was doing a sales job at the time, and jumped into accounting. And I've always been fascinated on what gets people's attention. And then how you can use that attention to get a desired result. Um, but in terms of my backstory, look, you know, growing up in the eastern suburbs, uh, playing cricket, love all of that. Um, and we'll, we'll touch on, on the mental health because it's, it's a big part of me. Like, I'm not the disease, but it, it does shape the way I, I think about the world. So Yeah, there's heaps yeah. of interesting topics that I can't wait to dive into yeah yeah so that's that's a bit about me so um so yeah love love my sport love my marketing yeah and love building relationships with people love it, so man. That's what, about. what um <coughs> what was it about marketing that really resonated for you yeah so <coughs> growing up i always loved the ads love looking at ads and you know have a bit of a smirk um people get annoyed by them but i was always looking at billboards i was always looking and I think it's coming back to marketing's job is to show someone a product and put it in right place, right time, and grab their attention. Um, I was a, I was an introverted kid growing up, so I I had to figure out ways th- of how I could yeah gain that attention. And I think marketing just relates to that. So so the the attention side of things, what stops people scrolling in a news feed? Um, those so kind of things yeah and I guess it's like a tool like anything else you know like a knife can be used to kill someone or <laughs> <laughs> used to cut up some dinner you know so <laughs> marketing yeah. is the same way you know oh 100 I mean marketing my f- my lecturer my first year lecturer Peter Wagstaff is his name he said marketing's job is to improve the image of a company brand but marketing the word itself has an image problem <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> you know, we think marketing, we think telemarketer, salesman. Like it, it almost gets piled in with the piled in with the sales stuff, which yeah. is unfair. But um, what did you think does. about doing a marketing degree? Was because I've heard some people say that they do like a degree and then it's all kind of outdated mm. and irrelevant by the time they graduate. Like they never end up learning about Facebook marketing or whatever. Yeah. What was your experience like? I I love that you asked me that question. So first and foremost, absolutely loved it. Um, I think for me personally, it was a ground in which I learnt what I was passionate about. Um, I figured out the fundamentals that is needed because core, core consumer behaviour doesn't change. So you need to learn that. But to your point where people go, oh, it's outdated, it's, it's irrelevant, you can't teach someone the latest Facebook strategy you can't teach someone how to run google adwords you can't like i've built a tiktok account to twenty thousand followers university didn't teach me that i went out and created a bridge and did that myself so what i did was i realized that okay well there will be shortcomings because as soon as you create a course on tiktok the information is outdated (laughs) it's true (laughs) or as soon as you create a facebook ads course two three years later the algorithms change so a university by nature can't do that and I don't expect them to what I expect them to do is I can run an effective Facebook ad because I know consumer behavior because I fundamental principles yeah yeah because I know the principles behind it now if you do you need a degree in 2020 I don't think you need one but but for me I wouldn't be where I am without it and I wouldn't be where I am without the teachers that I have so um but there's definitely stories of, you know, Bill Gates, Zuckerberg, 
you know, these people dropping out of their uni degrees, but that's their path. Yeah. Um, so everybody has a path. It's a bit of survivorship bias as well, <laughs> those sort of people. For every one person that becomes Bill Gates, you've got mm. a thousand people who end up in their mum's basement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I totally get that. Yeah. So marketing has always been an interest of yours. And you mentioned sales when you were sort of talking mm. about your story as mm. well. Is that something that was always came naturally for you? Um, funnily, it did. Yeah. Yeah. Funnily, it did. Um, my first sales interaction. So I went and got a telemarketing job at eighteen. Love it. And my first phone call, I was nervous as all heck. Yeah, you know, nervous. Second phone call, got told to put it where the sun don't shine. Um, well, I won't say the exact words uh -huh. to keep your show uh -huh. <laughs> clean um and but the third call i made an appointment so i was booking appointments so i was fascinated with hang on what happened to someone saying no get stuffed to yeah i'll i'll buy from you i'll okay so what was that what was the change now could have been the person could have been the fact that i just got told to go away and the adrenaline was higher so i was happier and whatever um but for me, sales, I, immediately there was this change from 18 to 19 where I gained a lot of, lot of confidence, a lot of more personal skills and almost changed from an introvert to an extrovert through sales. Yeah, yeah. that's cool, man. Yeah. Do you think you changed from an introvert to an extrovert or you just became more comfortable with yeah. who you are? Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, it's probably that. Yeah. Probably realised who I was and interesting yeah because i guess because for me um i do consider myself introverted but i don't consider myself shy yeah so i think there's yeah it's kind of like a it's well it's the energy level like you know people can say i'm an introvert and then immediately you think that that's a bad thing and it's totally not it's just where you get your energy from yeah. so an extrovert i can go to a party i can be tired as heck sitting at home and and that's the worst thing in my mind but i can go to a party and have instant energy because it's I'm around people, whereas you, you know, we've seen the cover photos of the books, right? <laughs> you get energy from you know sitting home reading a book. Dude, it's so true, and it's funny. It's a good topic because when, so I, as I said, I definitely do. I agree with that. That I get more energy from like sitting at home and reading a book than going out. But I also see the value in going to these things like events, meeting people, and so I don't think. For introverts like me, we can't use it as an excuse to not go and do those things. It just needs, means we need to be aware of it. Like, I'll give you an example. I, I was going to all these events and it was just like burning me out. But what I started doing is actually like coming up with these like strategies. It's like, yeah, I'll go and I'll talk to like five people. Awesome. And then I'll go to like the bathroom and just like stand there for mm. <laughs> like five minutes to recharge. So rather than just like burning myself out. My, my favorite thing in any kind of group situation is what I call party hopping. Um, where you notice in a party or even networking situations, groups form, physical circles form. And I had this technique where I would just walk right into the centre of that group and then shake everyone's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Did it always work out well? Always worked out well. Always it. worked out well. Because I didn't come in and shake hands and then talk about myself. I then asked everyone questions. Yeah. So, y you know, the, we all know the person who just talks about themselves and we don't like it. <laughs> But that's so true because you can almost people are, are forgiving of you interrupting them as long as it's like to make an introduction that's like the only time people are forgiving of it so they can be like in the middle of a story and you can walk up and you can interrupt them but if it's just to like say hi and introduce yourself people are like oh yeah hey and then they'll keep going whereas if you come in and like try to like ask something or whatever they'll <laughs> their phone won't be receptive <laughs> to that so yeah for sure yeah it's cool Cool. And so what was, so how did sales evolve for you from the telemarketing job you first have? Y yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in that company, I, I went from pure telemarketing booking to then face-to-face, -face, um, then to pre-qualifying. So each way going pr promotions. Um, and, but then that company went under. Well, right. not, didn't go yeah. under. They, they didn't, did they, um, they're still around, sorry. Uh, they just restructured. Restructured. <laughs> so they saw that the do not call register came in and the people were not picking up their phone. Yeah. Telemarketing was less of a less and less of a thing. So then I just went off and 
continued on my degree. But um, a few years later, I found myself at another booking role um, at a company uh, called Vardacard. And essentially, that's a massive lesson because there's a case study in that business. It's, it's really, really fascinating. Um, but then I was the top performer in booking. That's awesome. Uh, I would be booking eight, eight appointments a day, uh, five days a week. Um, I'd be walking to work, literally going, there's eight business owners that are going to talk to me today that will book an appointment and, and that's what's going to happen. Um, but then that naturally then led, so I was booking appointments for business development managers. Then I got promoted into the business development manager role yep. um, where I would do a mixture of online sales. Um, so I would do my job originally of booking appointments, but now it's just myself. Then I would do a screen share appointment and sell over the phone. Mm. So people people would purchase from me without even seeing me, hmm. which I was shocked by. And now <laughs> looking back, I'm shocked by. Um, but I would also do in person as well. So I'd book an appointment, go out and see them in person, depending on where they were. I love it. Has that skill set helped you out in other areas? 100%. Yeah. I mean, let's say uh, it's funny to talk about relationships and sales, but it, it just correlates so much um when i was courting my mm. girlfriend um you know with tinder and bumble and snapchat and whatever it is <laughs> that you're using to date someone uh, facebook's coming out with one you know people are seeing going on dates especially those first two weeks knowing one day three or four or five people so you've got to stand out you've got to do something a little bit different um you know going that extra mile uh that sales teaches you how to do yeah. you know Instead of just texting someone, actually call them and be like, hey, like, you know, we had an awesome date. Um, I just felt like calling you. How's your day been? Yeah. You know, someone else our age just doesn't do that. If you yeah. haven't had sales, they go, oh, why are you calling me? <laughs> <laughs> and it worked, obviously. You're still together? Yeah, yeah, still together. Still <laughs> together. Uh, any other suitors that she had were, were quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you crushed them. <laughs> crushed them. <laughs> That's good, man. Oh, man. I always say life life is sales. But life is sales, and it's more than just relationships. Um, you know, in terms of romantic, it's it's friendships, it's um, connections like, like we've got. You know, we both used basic appointment setting skills to set this stuff up. Dude, it's crazy how it seems basic, but a lot of people will struggle with that kind of thing. Mm. Even literally just not, not let alone actually reaching out to someone and trying to get someone to agree to doing an interview or whatever, but then actually executing on executing that. Executing the time. That's actually very hard for some people, mm. so I totally get it, man. Yeah, and it's it's simple. Like, you know, my first question to you was, once we locked in a date, then it's like, okay, morning or afternoon. So now you're thinking in your head, oh, okay, morning or uh, afternoon is probably better for me. Cool. Next question, early in the mo early in the afternoon or late in the afternoon? Yeah. Oh, probably early afternoon. Cool. Well, th that then leaves... 12 and 1 o'clock. What time did we meet? <laughs> 12. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it makes total sense. sense. That's cool. And I totally agree with all that. Sales is a fundamental skill that um, that's helped me a lot in other areas too, so I get that. Yeah. You mentioned TikTok before. That's something mm. I'm curious about. I've sort of... Love it. I've started... I've posted one thing. What are you doing? What did you do? I, I posted a, a thing because um, I flew... Emirates first class last year. Fantastic. And so I'd like put together a little clip of that, me like sipping champagne and stuff and posted that up. <laughs> You're going for the Instagram move. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, that was all I did. But I saw yeah. it got um, it got something like 500 views. I had zero followers. So it got like 500 views. And then I got like a few random followers from Fantastic. it. Fantastic. And so you said you've built up something to over 20,000 followers. So what's your thoughts on tiktok and yeah look tiktok is in a space right now where it is the new kid on the block and because it's a new kid on the block organic reach is the powerful thing there's cheap real estate if you were um organic reach for people that don't know is free 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 reach so you're reaching people without paid advertising um the account that i've grown so i've grown an account to 20.7 thousand followers this is uh, the account's called rescue turtle um, and I didn't do anything special. I'm not some guru, I'm not some person. I, I just used every marketing fiber in my body to just test something. 
um, and I put up some really emotional based turtle videos, put some headings, titles, you know, really s um, somber emotional music that would get people to feel something, <laughs> you know, um, but, but then talked on relevant topics. I mean, I've actually always wanted to save the turtles and they're, they're uh, on TikTok there's a visco girl, so it's a trend where they wear scrunchies, oversized t-shirts, metal straws, metal, you know, they don't use plastic at all and, and their, their tagline is save the turtles. So I just backed on that trend. But there was an essay that I wrote in year seven about wanting to save the turtles. So this is, um, this is actually full circle. Wow. Um, but uh, yeah, I've just got content, um, put it, made sure it was in the right thing and, and just, I also watched it. So you, you want to watch every platform, even if you're new to Facebook. You want to scroll through Facebook and just see what people are, the language of the, the platform. So I scrolled through, I've been watching TikTok since it was Musical.ly, like mm. two years ago. Yeah. So you got to just watch it and, and I love it. It's at a, you know, you can put a video up. I've got a video there with half a million views, or just wow. under half a million views. It's amazing. So, and that just got on the For You page. Wow. Didn't pay for it. Yeah. And, and that's what, that's where the bulk of the traffic. That's amazing, man. Hmm. Big untapped opportunity at the moment that I think Correct. a lot of marketers should be thinking about, something that I'm thinking about. You should. Yeah. You should. My podcast one um, is nowhere near 20,000, but I've got 1,800 followers on there in comparison to my my uh, Instagram, which is sort of something like 600 at the moment. Yeah. So, but if you, I told this to a friend who was arming and arming about it, and I said, I put a post up that got on my podcast page 40,000 views. I went from zero followers to 600 overnight. You know, imagine if you put up an Instagram post and that same result happened, you'd be you'd be over the moon. Yeah. So that's what I see TikTok as. I love it, man. Yeah. And yeah, it seems like it is evolving as well to become a bit more like Instagram in a way. So definitely get the cheap mm. real estate. I'd say I'd say Instagram, but also a combo of Insta and Vine. So yeah. we all loved Vine. Like yeah. there's still compilations of that and that's what's making it strong because it's a Vine similarity. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool, man. So you've done well, like, you know, you've got these sales skills, you've done this marketing degree. Sounds like your life's been pretty good so far. I was wondering if there's any challenges you had in yeah. terms of getting to this point. <laughs> that's a good question and a uh, well-prepared question. Um, because no life, life on the surface and all those things, um, yeah, we can say that I've had a rosy life and I've grown up in the eastern suburbs. I'm a straight white male with all my legs and arms and, you know, I've got it kind of easy. But honestly, no, I've, I've had some dark times um, and I'm very open with it. Um, so I've been diagnosed with bipolar too. Now, a lot of people, that's and also commonly referred to as manic depression, Stephen Fry um, has, has this... What bipolar is when people think of it they think it's up and down up and down up and down every day you're a different person bipolar 2 which isn't necessarily the definition of bipolar as well but bipolar 2 is defined as sustained periods of depression and uh, elevated periods of mania which is um, yeah described as heightened energy you can have flight of ideas you're just going going at full pace and um yeah, look, I've had a number of... The thing I struggle with most is the depression. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some really dark thoughts, some really dark times. Um, you know, not wanting to get out of bed. Um, my conversation goes. So as an, as an extrovert who's a salesman and a marketer, to have your conversation go is scary. Yeah. Really scary. Um, but look... In terms of in terms of the illness and how I see it, um, I define depression as a ability for me to gain an insight into myself that not a lot of people get. Wow! Because every time I go through depression, I learn something that I needed to learn about myself. Wow! Um, it's an amazing way to look at it. Yeah, and then the mania uh, is gives me an ability to tap into a heightened level of energy, motivation, drive, and creativity that a lot of people don't get. Yeah. So while the, the, my podcast was born out of a manic phase. Wow. 
I I just had this clarity, this creativity that came over me where I went, I love personal development. I love talking to people. I'm going and talking to mentors all the time and not recording it. <laughs> Let's just start recording it. Wow. Um, so do you, yeah. That's amazing. And yeah, thanks for, for opening up. Of course. About that. Yeah. And, I and look, if I, I do urge people to reach out if they're, you know, going yeah, through yeah. things as well. But sorry, yeah, go I definitely wanted to ask what your advice to someone is like, because, yeah, it's crazy. Like, if someone is going through something like that, because it sounds like you can go to some pretty dark places and then some other strange places as mm. well. So I guess for someone listening, if they have something similar that they're going through, what's mm. your advice to them? First thing is um, realise how actually normal it is. Realise that, mm. that, you know, it's not just oh, something's wrong with me and therefore I, it's really hard to get out of it. It's actually, I've learned that by sticking my hand up and going, I'm not okay, I need to go and get some help. I need to talk to the right professional. I need medication. Even the medication argument, there's people that I know that should be on medication that don't take it because they view it as a stigma. Mm. But if we have, look at it this way, if you have a cold, what you, what do you do? You take medication for the cold. If you have a headache, you take medication for the headache, and it, that's my my same advice. So so be open minded with that. And it doesn't mean anything's wrong with you. It's no. just something an imbalance that needs to be addressed. Yeah, and and look, just speak up. And it's hard. I I get it. It because I don't want to. Like when I'm when I'm depressed, I don't want to talk to people. No way. Like. I don't want to yeah. see anyone. Like literally, you know, I'm quite well kept at the moment. But but when I'm depressed, you know, there's a big beard, um, y you know, y and I get it. But it, I there's an opportunity cost for me of at least eight to nine months when it happens. Wow. Yeah. So you got to just yeah reach out would be my my big advice and and to anyone even if a professional daunts you. Have one solid friend that you can go. Hey, this is this is what's happening. Um, doesn't have to be a partner. Doesn't have to be a romantic thing. Does doesn't even have to be you know your closest buddy of twenty years. It could just be someone that you know for twelve months that that will understand and um, yeah have that conversation. Yeah, that's good advice. Yep. Thanks for sharing that. That's fine. It's strange. Like, I don't know. What's your opinion? Like, do you think? Because you said at the start there that you get some deep insights into yourself you wouldn't get otherwise. Mm. And you also sometimes get some wild ideas from it. So I think it's it's definitely not a good thing, but what's your thoughts? Like, is it something that you... If you could change it, would you? Or do you think... No. Wow, okay. No. Why would I... No, I would not want to, for any, any amount of things, get rid of this. I'd... I've said to my mum, um, I really enjoy having bipolar too, and it scares the crap out of her because what she sees is is an eight months of depression. Yeah. But what I see is, I mean, um, two years ago when I came out of a depressive episode, I understood the power of exercise, eating healthy, and and because you don't, you, I'm sedentary the whole time. So yeah. then, as soon as you start walking every day, you just see a positive change. Um, and then this time around, so 2019 was, was another period, I learnt about speaking out, mm. just telling people. You know, when you, in a, in a professional setting, letting people know, hey, this email's going to take a little bit longer because I'm sick, is totally, I mean, they, they're not going to be happy, but, but letting them know yeah. is so much better. So, so these are just two things that I've picked up and I'm sure there's more along the way um, and there's easier ways to learn these lessons but sometimes um, <laughs> we'd like to think there is but it's funny I was interviewing someone else a while back and you know he's he came from Afghanistan as a refugee and his father was killed um, by the Taliban over there and he was saying in that interview that you know even though it's a terrible thing and obviously horrible like he said to grow up without his father and he was like killed he's actually in a way grateful for that because mm. because of that adversity he's been able to come through that and create this amazing life out of that 
It gives you perspective. Yeah. It gives you massive perspective. That was the other thing. When I said before, I'm a straight white male with two eggs and two legs and two arms. That right there is enough to give you motivation. But then you add, I've got a car. Mm. Um, I've got two different houses that I can go to. The one I'm leaving with my girlfriend and my parents for my mum's house. These are all luxuries. Mm. You know, these are all, when you take that as a base, it's pretty powerful. So this isn't to say what you're going through is any less because I, I would hear that to put to press and go, yeah, whatever, you've, you've, got, you've got that. You know, but I've also got this other thing that's going on in my head. But, but having that perspective shift of things are actually okay here in Australia. Yeah. We it's don't have our parents getting murdered by the Taliban. Yeah. So it's all perspective and it's all gratitude. Mm-hmm. 100%, man. So that's where journaling the, the you know, three things I'm grateful for is a really good thing to do. Totally, man. Yeah, well, it's powerful. And thanks for opening up about that because I think it's funny with these sort of things, there's, there's always someone listening who will resonate with this because they're going through something similar. And I think the more you just. Mm. put it out there and get it out in the open oh, it and and a friend of mine when i finished a podcast with him once said he's one of the reasons you started this to give a platform to talk about your mental health and i i didn't even think of it that way but a lot of the times when i'm doing a podcast it comes up yeah um so yeah look there is always one or two people listening that you could resonate with and yeah impacting one person is quite powerful for sure it's cool man so I want to be mindful of the time, but of I course. really want to ask you about your podcast. Yep. So what's, um, maybe if we could just talk about that for like five minutes, of course. tell me what, why you wanted to start that and yeah. what you're hoping to achieve with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll give it a bit of a cheeky plug. Um, <laughs> Go for it. So it's Bean Talking. My last name's Beanland. Uh, so B-E-A-N, talking, or one word. And um, essentially I started this because... I always had an ability to ask questions. I went on a study tour for university and uh, we were talking to chief marketing officers of Emirates and and Samsung and all of these companies and more often than not, I would always ask the question at this thing and compound that with, I was then catching up with mentors, people that have done things in business and they were giving me this advice and they're also saying things like, I can't believe I just told you that. (laughs) (laughs) So, I then was like, well, why don't I record these? Yeah, the gear that we have, like we're talking through two, two microphones plugged into a Zoom, recording on a camera. All this stuff is, in terms of what it used to be 10 years ago, very affordable. So, you can start something like that. I sold a laptop, bought all the gear, chucked the Zoom on the, on the table and, and off I went. Um, my cousin's husband is a sound engineer, so I asked him at his wedding, I asked him at the wedding, I'm going to do podcasts, um, what what gear should I get? And just plug this thing in my phone and said, get that. I went and bought it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, and it started, yeah, based on curiosity. So my tagline is um, conversations are based, uh, conversations are sparked by curiosity, genuine curiosity. Totally. Um, you know, I had a phone call one day in sales where this guy just opened up to me about his life and his business and I'm selling him something and he's <laughs> opening up to me about all these troubles. Hang up on the phone, make the appointment, go into my boss and I just thought, well, how did that start? I just asked him questions. There's your answer. Mm. You know, so Curiously. the podcast is based around who are peak performers, what are peak performers doing and then just asking him questions that I'm curious about. Yep. <laughs> you know, <the laughs> that's where the best conversations come yeah, from. Hundred percent. Yeah. Mm. So mostly around business and sort of marketing. Yeah, there is a business tinge to it. So um, because that's my network. That's I've grown up in a marketing sales environment. I know a lot of business owners. I, I now have that network, and and it does lead to that. But but I definitely want to branch out and talk to more sports stars, sports personalities. Um, peak performers in other industries not just business so psychologists and doctors and people doing meditation even like <laughs> like um yeah. you know but it just happens at the moment that it's business business focus but but i believe a peak performer can be in any field totally and that's the same for me it's it is mostly business for my podcast yep. but there's it 
at the end, it does come down to high performance, which can be yeah. any. Oh, our podcasts are very, very similar. Yeah, I think that's um, why we connected well. It, <laughs> I, I read your Instagram bio of the podcast. Like, this guy's, this guy's like me. <laughs> uh, that's it. So, <laughs> which is awesome because yeah. because the more the more people out there doing what we're doing, um, and the more listeners that can listen along, the better. Totally, man. Yeah. So, what's coming up next for you in good question twenty twenty? So. Um, big push on the podcast. Big push. I'm going to be putting an episode out every week. Awesome. Um, it's hard. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> hard, but I'm committing to it. Love it. Um, bought a lot of gear. It's uh, impressive. Uh, yeah. We recorded on it just before and has <laughs> puts my pales my <laughs> setup in comparison. There's always upgrades. Though. <laughs> I mean, we know um, we know a guy in Melbourne who's got a whole studio. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but there's that. Um, um, exciting opportunities that have actually come up in terms of uh, me producing podcasts for other businesses. It's amazing. So my uncle is a franchise owner of Loan Market, and he said to me over the over the holidays, "I want to start a podcast. What would it look like for you to produce one for me?" And I go, "That's a great idea. <laughs> I'll do it." So we went around, we got all the gear, and and then um, so he's got um, home loan hacks, awesome home loan hacks, and. Um, I'm I'm producing that one for him, and um, got another one with a marketing agency that I'm doing as well. So, cool. um, it's all coming from the podcast. Yeah, we're coming from from me putting out content, and then business owners going, "How do you do it?" Dude, it's so funny. Like that's how often the best opportunities come about. You know, like people often ask me, like, "Do you monetize the podcast?" And mm. no, I don't monetize the podcast directly, but indirectly, there's indirectly, so many opportunities yeah. that come from it. Because I mean, I don't want a payment gate to be part of the podcast. Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to be like, okay, cool, well, this is my audience size and if you want to come on the show, here's a media kit. Yeah. Um, but I also see value in terms of the content for the business owner. So I'm also more than happy to chop the stuff that they're bragging about their business. I'm more than happy to chop that up and mm. do that. But, but that's, that's an indirect service. Yeah. But there's never... You know, I'm I'm now putting this on record. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have a payment gate for a podcast, but but producing your month's worth of content in a 40 minute session and then having that chopped up for you, I think that's a really valuable valuable thing. Totally. Yeah. So, is there anything I haven't asked you, or anything you want to make sure you pass on before we um, finish up here, Tim? Yeah, I mean, I guess I just I just want to because it is close to me. I I, I want to make sure if anyone. Um, heard stuff about the mental health that it's maybe even triggered you a little bit or um or you want to reach out to me do do so um and we'll get into how you can do that um, but also more than likely what i'll do is i'll talk you through it but i'll push you to a professional because i'm not a professional but but if you are struggling and want to talk to someone i, I am here um and that's something i want to yeah get across awesome it's very generous of you <laughs> What's the best way for people to connect with you if yep. they want to see what you're up to? Sure thing. So the Instagram handle is Bean Talking, um, B E A N and Talking, all one word. Uh, the email would be Tim at same thing Bean Talking dot com dot A U, uh, B E A N Talking, all one word, and that's uh, that's how they can contact all through LinkedIn. Uh, Tim Beanland. Uh, we just connected yesterday, I think. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well. Thanks again, Tim. It's fascinating. Like you've you have an interesting perspective on marketing and sales. I think we, we've got a very similar background in the things that we've we done. Do. So yeah. your sort of story resonated with me, and you know, to be open as well about some of the challenges you faced, and I think it's going to help a lot of people. So appreciate you doing that, and excited to see what you do with the podcast in 2020. Cool. So thank you very much for coming on the show today. Yeah, more than and thank you again for giving me the platform. <laughs>